All right. Siddhi, you can start me. Okay, thank you. Uh, so welcome everybody to uh, this uh, wonderful series of talks hosted by Bhaskaracharya Pratishthan Pune. Uh, today we have uh, Professor Ling Long who will be talking to us about Hecker traces via hypergeometric character sums. Over to you, Professor Long. Thank you. I'd like to thank the organizers for putting everything together and for the invitation. So this is a joint work with uh, my colleagues uh, Professor Joran Hoffman, um, Professor uh, Founding Two, both at LSU and also Win Lee at Penn State. So this is a work we are actually currently undergoing and uh, two of my collaborators are here. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask either one of us. Okay, so I will go ahead. So um, I would like to first start with the motivation for uh, elliptic or hacker modular forms. So traces of hacker operators can be computed from the universal families of elliptic curves. So they are fiber over modular curves according to earlier work of Eichler, Shimura, and Ihara. For example, I quoted a sentence from one of Ihara's paper published in 67. And he said that we shall prove some identity between Hecker polynomials and congruent zeta function of some algebraic varieties, which are actually fiber varieties. The fibers are products of elliptic curves. And for the case when uh, gamma is a triangle group, this is the particular case we're going to be focusing on, the variation of the Hodge structures of the fibers are actually um, debited by hypergeometric differential equations. There are results by, for example, Scott Algram, and um, actually, um, in addition to Scott Algram, there are also a paper by Scott Algram and Ken Ono, and also um, there is another paper by uh, Sharon Fashet, Ken Ono, and Matt Papanicolos. Later, there is uh, also results by Lennox. And they will be of the form traces of TP, hacker operator, adding on a space of, in those cases, for modular curves. It's a cast form. So SK gamma stands for weight K cast forms. And on the right hand side, they provide an expression in terms of hypergeometric character sums. So that's for the classical case. And for our main result, it will be about Fusian groups. So those are the groups which are discrete subgroups of SL2R. When they add on the upper half plane, they will have compact fundamental domain. For those uh, cases, if you study modular forms, because there are no cuts for this particular kind of groups, we're going to see one um, picture. So what we are going to call uh, corresponding to the Shimura case. So we cannot use the Q expansions for their modular forms. And we all know that Q expansion, they play an important role in the study of hacker modular forms. However, in the case of triangular groups, especially for arithmetic triangle groups, we're going to define later. Professor Yi Fan Yang provided basics using hypergeometric functions. So more or less what this sentence means that Professor Yi Fan Yang provided basics for the left-hand side where the hacker um, operators act on in terms of hypergeometric functions. And in the, uh, also in the early work of Kuga and Shimura, they actually build a bridge very much like the case for Ihara, uh, relation between Hecker polynomial and zeta functions of uh, product varieties. However, if we want to use their construction to compute Hecker traces, their universal family are non explicit. So it's actually difficult to implement if we want to do the equality, the right hand side is not very explicit. So our main result in case I won't be able to get to the very end, 
The main result is as follows. We identify six arithmetic triangle groups. The first two with compact fundamental domain, and there are also four other groups. So the first two are 266. Six. I'm going to explain that later. And 246, they both correlate to the uh, quaternion algebra of discriminant six. And four other groups with cusp, including two infinity infinity, two three infinity, which is PSL to C, and two four infinity and two six infinity, which are commensurable with two uh, PSL to C. For these six arithmetic triangle groups, we actually provide explicit formulas of the form. The left hand side is also hacker operator acting on the corresponding space. For the first two, uh, we only need to talk about space or modular forms because there are no cusp. For the other four, we will write the modular form, they vanishing at the cusp, including infinity, infinity, and infinity, infinity, and infinity. And the right hand side, we are going to provide explicit formula in terms of hypergeometric character sums. Another thing I like to emphasize is that the formulas will hold for almost all primes P, which is one of the technicalities we are facing when dealing with this project. And for myself, another motivation is I have an earlier work, uh, another joint work with Fountain Chu, and also uh, collaborators, uh, Alison Dames and Jennifer Sally and Hollis Richard. We computed um, actually two dimensional abelian varieties, fiber over one of the group subgroups of 266 at the midst quaternion multiplication using hypergeometric characters. And at that time, the motivation was we're going to look for applications like this talk. So I'm personally very pleased that the paper that we wrote in 2014 now have an application. So let me just quickly remind you some of the things that have been mentioned quite a few times in, during this series. A multi-set, for my talk consists of rational numbers is defined over Q. So if I have a multi-set, this is the cardinality of rational numbers. They are, the multi-set itself is said to be defined over Q. If you construct a polynomial using the roots or unities coming from the AJs and then turns out the combination, the coefficients is in Z. The example includes, for example, one half, one half. So the element can repeat. And if you look at what the corresponding polynomial is, it's x plus one squared. So it's defined over z, the coefficients in z. And a set of hypergeometric parameters in this uh, talk will be consists of two multi-sets. One is the upper one, one is the lower one. For the lower one, we actually fix the, the notation that one choice will be one. Uh, with uh, all the uh, AIBJ will be in Q. And such a pair is said to be primitive if the difference of any AIBJ chosen from the two multi-sets, the difference is not in Z. And there is another notion which will be in place an important role will be the least common denominators of all the AI and BJs. So we call the least positive denominator to be this capital letter M. And this capital letter M represents in the background, there is a cyclotomic field, which is Q joining zeta M. And zeta M here is a primitive N through or unity. So a priori, the objects I'm talking about, they are live in this cyclotomic field over here. And one of the important job for us is actually put the object or extend the object all the way down to Q. And I forgot to mention because <laughs> uh, this uh, is an ongoing project. If you have comments or questions, free, please feel free to stop me during my presentation. And now given alpha and beta to multi-sets, we can define, I'm not going to go through all the details which they were already in Professor Two's talk that you can talk about and also 
uh, Professor Fritz Poikers talk about classical hypergeometric functions. And the thing I want to emphasize is for as a function of z, it satisfies an order n ODE, ordinary differential equation with only three singularities at zero, one infinity. I did know the differential operator annihilates this f function to be hypergeometric differential equation with parameters set alpha, beta, and use a variable z. And the most important thing, or one of the very important thing for this talk is the solution space form a local rigid local system, which is already explained in Professor Fritz Boyker's talk. And the rank of the local system correlate to the size of the uh, multi-set, how many elements in the multi-set. And then the assumption here, they will be the same. And then I also assume this is a primitive case. And correspond to hypergeometric functions, there are different versions of finite field analogs. In particular, uh, I would like to fix this uh, choice. There are two choices which are very convenient for my talk. One choice is called the H function, which is up here. Um, I mean, the idea is already in Dermot McCarthy's papers and formulated in the paper by Fritz Boykitz, uh, Harry Cohen, and Anton Mamet. So the definition is analogous to the classical situation. And one thing I want to emphasize is in the definition is dividing out by some terms consists of Gauss sums. So G here stands for Gauss sums. So a priori, the value may not be integral, may not be algebraically integral due to the definition. So sometimes we might have to multiply some power of P to the front to make it to be algebraically integral. We will see that in our main result. And for the definition, if you start with this formal definition where omega is a generator for the uh, multiplicative um, characters for invertible elements in the finite field. Another thing I want to emphasize is a priori, the Q has to be, which is the size of the finite field, there is a requirement to start with, which is that Q has to be one modulo, the least common denominator of AI and BJ. In the case when alpha, beta, lambda are all defined over Q, this condition can be dropped out. So to us, the important thing is the hypergeometric character sum um, in terms of it's more conveniently, they are in terms of traces or representations. In the original definition, they corresponding to traces or Galois representations of the few, uh, the Galois group, which is Q bar over Q joining theta M, and then which is element, the color representation of this group. And what is said over here, the condition can be dropped, the definition can be extend, means the corresponding representation, uh, which uh, the trees is computed by HQ, can be extended to color representation of GQ. And A, is, is there any question before I move on? <laughs> In case I'm speaking too fast, please let me know as well. All right. So here's some of the motivations. So this is also a picture which is already on kind of the theorem mentioned earlier, I, I believe in Professor Fritz Boyko's talk, which is the Swartz theorem, which says that if you look at alpha, which is a multi-set consists of two rational numbers, one called A, one called B, and beta, the lower parameter set consists of one and C. And if you pick any two local solutions, if they're independent near any regular point on the upper half plane, so H here is the upper half plane. Then the quotient, we take the quotient of any two in linearly independent solutions, they will provide a map which sends, so this picture, the pink one is the upper half plane and the white one down here represents the lower half plane. 
it will send actually uh, the upper half plane into a triangle. So it's a curve, curvy linear triangle and with vertices to be the images of zero, one and infinity. So it will actually send the pink upper half plane into a pink triangle of this shape. Moreover, the angle, which is around the images of zero, one and infinity can be computing very explicitly using around zero. The angle is p times pi, where p is a non-negative number given by one minus the lower parameter c, actual value, and q to be similarly c minus a minus b actual value, and r to be one a minus b actual value. So from this upper half plane, you get a triangle, which is called a Schwarz triangle. And once you get the Schwarz triangle, under additional assumption, which is when P, Q, R that I mentioned earlier, are all kind of reciprocal of integers. So when they're all reciprocal of integers, which is at least two, including you can go all the way to infinity. In those case, the value will be zero. In this case, we can actually talk about refractions of the Schwarz triangle. In this picture, we have this uh, Schwarz triangle. So you have we have P, we have Q, we have R over here, P, R pi. And we can talk about the refraction. So you have we have tau P correspond to this angle. We have the refraction this way is tau r, etc. Each of the refraction, of course, is orientation reversing. However, if we take a combination of couple of two distinct ones, we get to rotation around the singularities, which is for p, it will be around zero. So this is a rotation around zero, etc. And for those rotations, if we look at the corresponding order, they will satisfy the first rotation has order E1. The second rotation has order E2. The third rotation has order E3. And also the product is going to be one. So we get to one of the concept of triangle group. So triangle group will be a group of this form over here with three generators whose exponent is going to be a integer at least two, including infinity, and the product is going to be one. So this is a subgroup of the isometric group of the S representing the universal cover of the Schwarz triangle and orientation preserving. In particular, by Poincaré uniformization theorem, when P plus Q plus R is less than one, the universal power is going to be the upper half plane. So which means in those cases, we have gamma, which is a discrete subgroup inside SL2R. And for such a uh, gamma consists of, which is a triangle group, E1, E2, and E3, it's called arithmetic if it's commensurable with the known one group of an order of a quaternion algebra over a totally real field. So I'll give you an example a moment later, which splits only at one infinity place. And it was classified by Takeuchi that there are 19 commensurable classes. And I mentioned about this case before, two, three infinity is isomorphic to PSL2C. In the case when the fundamental domain, so this group now they embed it into SL2R, so they can add on the up half plane. And if the fundamental domain is compact, the corresponding curve is called a Shimura curve. In other cases, if there are cusps like this case over here, the fundamental domain will have a cusp, then we need to do the compactification. So this is called the modular curve case. Modular curves parameterize uh, elliptic curves, isomorphism classes of elliptic curves with uh, level structures. Likewise, so the case we're going to focus on will be 
later on will be quaternion algebra defined over Q. They classify two dimensional um, abelian surfaces with quaternion multiplication structure. And the QM stands for quaternion multiplication. That, so this means when we look at each abelian variety for the Shimura curve case is two dimensional. It, uh, the mixed quaternion multiplication means its endomorphism algebra when tensor over Q contains the corresponding quaternion algebra. So um, the previous slides tells us that if we look at arithmetic triangle groups, they can be actually, uh, there is explicit algorithm by Yi Fan Yang, so later, they can be explicitly realized by Swartz triangles. For instance, if we use the a, B, and C to form hypergeometric parameter for the choice of A and B. The upper parameter set to be one half, one half. The lower parameter set to be one and one. The corresponding Schwarz triangle, it's going to be the group infinity, 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 which is isomorphic to a gamma two a principal congruent subgroup of level two but it's projectively. So the group over here due to, they are realized as movie transformation. So I should say that they are in PSR2R. Another choice we're gonna see quite a few times will be when the parameter set are chosen to be one six one third, which is the upper parameter set. The lower parameter set is chosen to be one and five six the corresponding triangle group will be 366. And another thing I would like to point out is for the first example, the parameter set one half, one half, one, one are defined over Q. For the second one, it is not. For the second one, the corresponding psychotomy field is Q joining zeta six, so which is a quadratic extension over Q. Now here's the example of or how we get to uh, Swartz triangles. So we start with, um, this is the quaternion algebra of this minimum six. It can be written into this form defined over Q and it's generated by just like the quaternion case, I square is minus one, J square is three. And for this uh, quaternion algebra, which is uh, as a vector space, it's a, a dimension four over Q. It has a maximum order, which can be written down in terms of lattice generated by one I J and then one plus I plus J over two. For this, uh, inside this maximum order, you can actually define the norm as well, the reduced norm. If we look at uh, reduced norm one elements, it turns out to be a uh, group generating by four elements, uh, which can be given very explicitly in terms of i, j, and k. k is the product of i and j. And the order of the element, the generator given above of order two, two, three, and three, respectively, their uh, corresponding power is a scalar, and also the power, the product is going to be one. And if we consider the group of normalizers of the norm one group inside the invertible elements of B6, then the auctions includes the following ecmema involutions corresponding to divisors of six. So there are W2, which is one plus I, there is a W3 and W6. And now we're gonna see them into the matrix form. If we fix embedding of the quaternion algebra into two by two uh, matrices with real entries sending i to zero minus one, one zero. So it's clear that i squared is going to be minus one. i squared is going to be minus one, and then the j squared is going to be three. And under this particular embedding, we actually can write everything in terms of matrices. In particular, gamma 6, 1, it's the uh, no one group under the fixed embedding. 
The matrices can be written in terms of two by two matrices where the entries A and B are in this particular ring. And up front, there is a scalar one half. And also there is the requirement of the determinant of the matrix is one. And there is also further conditions on A and B. And on the second row, there are minus B prime, where prime means you take the different conjugate of square root of three. So it's a negative square root three. For this two, two, three, three um, group, so the uh, signature of this uh, gamma six one is two, two, three, three. The fundamental domain is the given one down here. And the, what we get is going to be a genus zero uh, Riemann surface by gluing together these two boundaries on the top. And then there are also uh, indications on how to do the grooming down there. And now we have this set up to be the maximum order and non one group. In particular, if we look for triangle groups, due to the commensurability, they're going to be arithmetic. So if we look for uh, such triangle groups, we start from 2233 two, that we have seen before. On top of 2233, two, three, if we add in addition W3, which is one of the economic involution, the corresponding group turns out to be a triangle group. And the orders of the elliptic points will be two, six, and six. And if we add both W2 and W3 to two, two, three, three, what we'll get will be two, four, six. So in our main theorem, these two groups will be in to the consideration. And there is an index two. So the relation up here is index two, index two, 266 has another index two subgroup. The signature is also genus zero. The signature will be 366. And so this is the group that uh, I mentioned about the earlier paper on the generalized the gender curve. It's actually parameterized by the corresponding Shimura curve for this one. And now we are going to start from the classical case and see what kind of results we would like to prove. For, so this is the description which has already appeared in quite a few people's talk, including Fritz Boykers, Professor Fernando Rodriguez, Rodriguez, and Professor Tu. So I'm not going to mention um, more, but just want to say that if we start from the logistic curve, if you change the choice of lambda, you're going to get elliptic curves of different shape. So when you look at the singularities at zero and one, then the structure will get degenerate. And if we look at a so for a chosen lambda, which is not one of those singularities, there is a unique up to scalar holomorphic differential one form, which is dx over y. And one of the period, which is when you go around zero to one, what you get is the hypergeometric function with upper parameter one half, one half, and lower parameter one, one. And the differential equation annihilates this particular function using lambda as a variable give us a local system. So the local system has a rank two. It's a vector space that it actually goes around with the fibers. For each fiber, it's a, so it's a, it's a bundle. The bundle, the vector space will be two dimensional, except that at zero and one, the situation is a degenerate. And also from the point count, as what we've seen in Professor Tu's lecture, for point counts for fixed lambda over finite field FP, which is group prime, the point counts, there is a major part and then there is a minor part. The minor part is exactly in terms of the hypergeometric character sum, which is the H function over here. The H function is more or less co correlate to for lambda, which is a rational number, which is not zero and one, 
we can build for each of the lambda a two-dimensional Galois representation of the actual Galois group. So that at the unramified prime P, the trace of the floor bandits is given by this particular value. And because it's a trace of a uh, operator adding on the two-dimensional vector space, it actually is the sum of two values. One I call A, another one, because the determinant will be P, is P over this, the first choice over here. And in terms of explicit computation, uh, I just want to mention that uh, this form. And what I mentioned before, there are two different things. One is going to be the local system coming from the differential equation. For V1, is what I mentioned before in the case of Legendre curve, but for higher weight, when k is going to be two plus another integer, this integer is even, which is at least two for my, um, for this talk over here, we can continue to build local systems, which is more or less correlate to Professor Yifan Yang's talk about different, about modular forms satisfying differential equations. So the Vn will be the solution space of the differential equation satisfied by modular forms of the corresponding weight. If we compute, this is the corresponding underlying um, either modular curve or Shimura curve. If we compute H1 homology, we will see that the weight K modular form will appear and also the anti-holomorphic modular form will appear as well. And they have actually LID counterparts. The LID counterpart correspond to the agenda curve will be the, you can build Galois representations using a locally constant shift, LID shift attached to above each uh, generic point, you can build a local constant shift using first cohomology of LID cohomology of the elliptic curves. So using comparison theorem in Etalco homology, we can actually attain Tekka option via the point counts, which is the main thing we're going to use for our proof. So there are two gadgets which will play important role in our final proof. One is the local system, which it's OC. Another one will be the Aladic uh, sheets so we're going to, in our uh, formulation, we write in, in terms of shift languages. I want to mention that one is over C, another is over L. And in terms of really computing the hacker chase, the left-hand side over here, when we compute the Frobenius action and adding on this uh, homology group, Due to the gross and date lap sheets chase formula, it's actually taking alternating sums for the computing the chase. And the final formula will be of the form. Due to the term we actually gonna see is in H1, so there is additional negative sign coming into the picture. Fiber-wise, it's of the form. You're computing for Venice, so this is a geometric for Venice at uh, the point of uh, the fiber when you reduce over FP. And so there is a, you look at what happens uh, in particular when look at the generic points, the formula for computing um, this chase over here on the right-hand side for the Legendre curve case, it's, it's going to be using there are two values, one is A, one is P over A. So you're going to take symmetric polynomials in terms of these two. So it's going to be summation of AI and then N minus I. I goes from zero to N, which is the polynomial on the right hand side. And if you're going to represent this uh, combination, one way we can do is we can write as a degree N polynomial in terms of the m equals to one case, which is a plus p over a. So we can do that, which is going to be an explicit polynomial. However, 
there might be degenerate points corresponding to cusp or elliptic points. At cusp, the way to handle it is relatively easy due to the uh, structure of the stabilizer at the cusp. So for each cuspidal fiber, the contribution is one. For elliptic fiber, it's in terms of key powers and sometimes in terms of values of hacker operators. And now we're going to get to the classical case. I'm going to show you only by the result obtained by Scott Elwood. So this is correspond to the generalized the general curve. So the group, which is gamma 0, 4, uh, conjugate to gamma 2. In his result, he actually wrote down negative trace of hacker operator acting on weight k, which is 2 plus m, modular forms. And the total kind of the value consists of two parts. The first part is the contribution at cusp. There are three of them. Each cusp contributes one. And at the good fibers, there are uh, P minus two good fibers. What you would do is this is the polynomial I mentioned. Uh, it's a polynomial in terms of P and in terms of the HP function, which is the case when M equals to one. So this is the explicit formula. So his result of his and also his joint paper with Keanu and Keanu's paper with uh, Sherry Fashet and Pap Matt Papanicolas, they all actually boils down to trace formulas and in particular trace formula due to Hijikata. But Hijikata's formula is very general, but it's actually a very involved formula. And I want to emphasize two things. One thing is for Scott Elgin's result, it will work for any prime p bigger than two. And owing partially to the fact that this hypergeometric data and this one are defined over q, and also the elliptic curve, the generalized legitimate curve is defined over q joint number. So it has a very good structure. So the other thing is really based on the base, curve, base case. So this is the classical case. And for the Shimura curve case, the situation will be similar. There is a uh, universal, as what uh, Kuka and Shimura mentioned, there is a universal family of two-dimensional abelian variety written as A sub gamma, fiber over the corresponding Shimura curve with the elliptic point removed. So we remove singularities. And then, of course, we can also do an embedding with, with the one without removing the singularities. And using H1 of the corresponding fiber at each generic lambda, say lambda is over uh, algebraic, if, if it's algebraic value, we can build a uh, algebraic shift by using the H1 cohomology. It gives rise to a four-dimensional Galois module. So on this particular structure, for instance, depends on where lambda lies on. It admits the action of the Galois group. So for this case, in the, instead of like the elliptic curve case, it's a two-dimensional Galois module. What we're getting is a four-dimensional Galois module. And another perspective of this uh, particular homology space is it also admits the action of the quaternion algebra. Because of that, the four-dimensional Galois representation typically will decompose into a two-dimensional piece and another two-dimensional piece. And the quaternion structure guarantees there is a relation between the two-dimensional pieces that they are actually isomorphic up to tensoring by something of finite order. So for the case when m equals to two, so which means I'm looking in particular at wave four case, there is a L edit uh, sheaf, which is actually is going to be the one we're going to use for the action of the forbearance using which we're going to compute the hacker operator. So for m equals to two, there is a three-dimensional L-edit sheet 
compute it from the symmetric square of the two dimensional representation, which is three dimensional, and then tensor product by this uh, one dimensional representation. And then we're going to deal with the singularities as well. And this is the gadget which allow us to compute hacker operators from point counts. For higher weight, just like what happened to Scott Elgon's case, for higher weight cases, once we know what happens at m equals to two, the formula can be derived inductively based on the base case. And so this is the Yifan Yang's result I mentioned for arithmetic triangle group E1, E2, and E3. So Yifan Yang's result giving us the description for SK of gamma when gamma is a Shimura curve. X gamma is a Shimura curve case. His description is very explicit. So he wrote down there was a basis and the nature of his theorem is there is a basis depending on J, J it goes within this range from zero to all the way to the dimension of the space. So this is the variation appearing to J. And in addition to this freedom, each one of them will have the form that Z is a modular function. In particular, it's a half module um, with values 0, 1, infinity at the singularities of order E1, E2, and E3. So the big part here is there is a combination, which is the hypergeometric function to F1, A, B, Z, where the parameters A can be written in terms of the uh, order of the, of the elliptic points E1, E2, and E3. Similarly, the second part, there is explicit formula as well. Using Yifan Yang's uh, algorithm, if we want to try it out for 366, so this is what we get. So the upper parameter is going to be, so the choice over here, E1 is going to be 6, E2 is going to be 3. So we get to this particular formulation. I'm going to try to remember. So this is 1, 6, 1, third, and then this two add up together is 1. And there is another part. After we use one of the fourth transformation, we get to the second 2F1 hypergeometric function. It's of the form. The parameters is more or less, in some sense, the complex conjugate in the sense that if you add these two together, you get 1. If you add one third and two third together, it's going to be one. If you add these two together, it's an integer as well. In the final few analog, so this is a one chase, and then this is the chase of the previous one up to complex conjugation. C is some constant, which is typically transcendental. I'm not going to focus on and worry about for my talk. So now let me quickly go over what do we do once we know um, 366 is correlated to 1, 6, 1, 3, and 5, 6. So there is a, a construction due to Wolfa and Archino. Using their construction correlate to the parameters 1, 6, 1, 3, 5, 6, there is a so-called generalized legenda curve. And the, now the power for y will be 6. And then the power on the right hand side correspond to x will be four and three and one, etc. And very much like the generalized Lagrangian curve case, we can write down on the differentials correspond to the Dirac homology. In particular, if you look at omega one, which both of them are holomorphic, the first one is dx over y, the second one is some polynomial of x dx over y to the 5. If we do similarly computing the periods, what we will get is exactly what corresponds to the funds result. So the computation over here showing us the local system v1 when it's over c, they correspond to solution spaces. And on the LED space, what we can do is on this particular curve for generic lambda, it's going to be genus three. 
However, if you go to the Jacobian variety, it has a decomposition due to the fact that when I replace Y6 by Y3, I get a quotient, which is a little curve. So from the Jacobian variety, we take away the old part coming from uh, something which is lower power, we get the uh, primitive part of the Jacobian variety will be two dimensional. Another good thing is it's fiber over 366 due to the background that we mentioned earlier. It's defined over lambda, Q over lambda. And we computed the period matrix. We recognize from the period matrix the quaternion multiplication. And how do we see the LAD part? To see the LAD part, now from the four dimensional Galois, the, yeah, from the two dimensional Jacobian variety defined over Q, if lambda is it's going to be chosen inside a rational number, which is not zero and one. And we can compute a four dimensional Galois representation. Moreover, when we take the restriction of the scalar representation to the index two subgroup, which is the absolute power group for Q joining square three. This is a Q joining theta six. Then we attain an isomorphism. The isomorphism um, says it decomposes into two dimensional, two two dimensional Galois representations of this smaller Galois group. In particular, the complex conjugate part it's related to the previous one by a finite order character. So this can be seen as follows. If we look at the first part of the two-dimensional Galois representation and compute the trace of the probabilities of the element, it's going to be nothing but a period matrix. There is, sorry, I forgot a negative sign over here. In terms of there is another uh, finite uh, hypergeometric character sign, what we call the period have the period um, form and there is analogous that definition I'm not going to go through but the important thing is if we're going to compare this period this its complex conjugate as I mentioned more or less this is correlated to the complex conjugate or one six is that the choice of six row unity will be the complex conjugate, etc. The relation in between will be there is a value, there is a explicit six root of unity. So omega is the generator for the uh, set of multiplicative characters. Omega raised to Q minus one over six makes into n. Uh, so this is uh, order six character evaluated at lambda. So the value will depends on lambda. The order is six. So this is precisely the situation we want to illustrate. In this case over here, when we want to compute m equals to two, the corresponding LAD shift will be precisely uh, this finite order character tensor product with symmetric square of this part over here. And the LAD shift is a module of this value group that can be extended to GQ. Okay. And now what I have described is there is a way to deal with the situation for 366. And another question we are facing is, can we pass the information from 366 to 266 and further all the way to 246? And the answer is a yes, it's due to a also another application of hypergeometric functions. And this time we use Kummer quadratic formula. Kummer quadratic formula basically is a relation between two hypergeometric functions. The parameter sets are chosen in the way which is inside the formula. The important thing is basically Kummer quadratic formula is in the back one, there are two uh, Swartz triangles. One Swartz triangle is the double cover of the other one. Okay? For instance, if I specialize my value B to be one third here, 
and C to be one six over here. If I do that, this will be five six. Again, this will be corresponding to the three six six case on the right hand side. And plug that in, I see that the right hand side will correspond to one quarter, one twelve, and five six. The corresponding uh, swatch triangle is going to be two six six. So the picture here is the three six six. It's a double color of two six six. And this particular quadratic form, sorry, the quadratic uh, function is the twofold color from um, the corresponding Shimura curves. Similarly, if I specify B and C in the other choice, I will get a relation between uh, 266 and 246. So this is the two arrows I mentioned. We use uh, Puma projective formula. We can move up. However, if we use them to move up, we're going to face another situation, which is typically what I'm trying to do, trying to imitate will be what happens to 366 case. We were pretty lucky in the case we start from two-dimensional abelian varieties right away, which is precisely correspond to what Cooper and Shimura mentioned. However, if we go use the same strategy for 266, what we get is a the primitive part is going to be an abelian variety. Now this time it's four dimensional instead of two dimensional. This four dimensional um, abelian variety by looking at their L functions, we know that they decompose over this cyclotomic field into a direct sum of two abelian surfaces. So that means on the table in order to compute what we want, we have two options. If we use either option, we will get to a very similar picture. Use any option, we'll get to a very similar picture. And likewise, we can take a corresponding structure, which is the symmetric square of the degree two part, cancel with the finite order part. The question we are facing right now will be, everything here will be a GK module. P is the cyclotomic field. And can we do the extension to GQ? Yeah. So which is the next question we are facing is, now we have the LED representation. Is it possible to extend it to a GQ representation? And also for what kind of groups this is possible? So for what kind of G, for what kind of gamma this is possible? And for the, this question over here, there is luckily another very nice formula inside our hypergeometric functions, which is for the Carlson formula. So the Carlson formula says, Okay, if I want to consider 266, if you still remember the parameters, it's one quarter, one, twelve, five, six. If I plug that into Clausen formula, and on the right hand side, I put into their complex conjugate in some sense, what I will get will be a three of two hypergeometric function. So the local system now on the right hand side is going to be three dimensional, correspond to the same square of this part, they are projectively equivalent. And in addition to the square two, there is another algebraic function of the variable x, which is one minus x raised to negative one half. Putting together, we get to the formulation uh, precisely co correlate to the LED setting over here. The three dimensional one is going to be symmetric square tensor with a linear term. And moreover, the amazing thing is, if I'm going to pick my parameter this way, which is by design, they are chosen that way, we get to the thread two. And if you look at the parameter set, it's one half, one third, two third. Wow, it's divided over Q. And also for the lower parameter set, it's one, five, six, and more or less, it's one six. If I take away one, it's also defined over Q. So this actually tells me that, yes, if I'm going to go through this route, 
the four-dimensional galois representation, if I'm just picking one of the abelian surfaces, I might not get to what I want. I may not. The four-dimensional galois representation cannot be extended to GQ directly as the four-dimensional representation. However, this particular choice can be. So this is uh, actually given us a gadget to bypass how to extend from uh, psychotomic field to GQ, psychotomic field's uh, Galois group to GQ. Another thing I want to mention is among the extensions, we will need additional twists by time minus three, which is actually we seen that from computing uh, zeta functions of the uh, general general code. Okay. So finally, let me mention about the LMA result. I have mentioned about that at the introduction. So our main result is for these six groups, the analytic kind of sheaf, which is kind of predicted by Kuka Shimura, can be realized by hypergeometric sheaves. In particular, I just want to show you the last couple of slides for 246. For V2, the point counts will be in terms of this hypergeometric character sum. Right. So for each generic fiber, what you would do is you use the alpha and beta set both defined over Q. There is a copy of P because HP itself is not integral, but P HP is going to be an integer for lambda, which is uh, rational. And in addition, we will need uh, additional twist. So this is the legenda symbol over here we will need the one minus lambda correlate to, on the left-hand side of Poisson formula is one minus X raised to negative one half. And we also need the negative three. So fiber-wise, we will use this value. And the main result is yes, then it will work. For instance, using this, I denoted by HP of lambda for generic, for lambda, which is not zero and one, this sum prime means I'm going to forget about what happens to zero and one. I'm going to take the contribution uh, separately. And for the case when n equals to two, the way is four, the formula says as follows. If we take the sum fiber-wise over good points, in addition to this summation, the major term, we need the correction from zero, one, and infinity, three singularities. In particular, for the singularity at zero, the contribution is this legenda symbol times P for one, is this one, etc. cetera. All together, for each prime P bigger than five, what you will get will be the TP's action acting on the VK module forms for 246 which is zero dimensional. So we always get zero. So this is the base case. So let me show you the last maybe 30 seconds, what happens to way six and way eight. For way six case, it's also zero dimensional. And now on the right hand side, the major part is a polynomial in terms of HP of lambda and P. And now the contribution from zero will be P square. The contribution from one consists of two parts. The first part is the P coefficient of a level 24, way five CM modular form. So this is the L function and modular form database notation. So the P coefficient of this CM modular form and why the way is lower than six is because it's a contribution from singularity relating to the competitification. And it's coming from hectare character. So the way is actually one lower than the expected value. And this is the contribution at infinity. And now when we first get to the non-trivial case over here, which is way eight, m equals to four, the space is going to be non-trivial. There is only one modular form. And why this is in the L function and modular form database notation, on top of everything I said, there is also the Jack K. Lennon correspondence, which actually uh, 
giving us an isomorphism between hacker option, hacker operators action acting on Shimura modular forms to uh, hacker action acting on hacker modular forms. In particular, the space is correlated to level six modular forms for dimension six through the Jackie Lemon correspondence. Jackie Lemon correspondence. So the feature on the right hand side is very similar to before. You have a polynomial, and you do that uh, fiber wise, and you take the contribution. And now, if you look at the contribution from the singularities, even out everything together, it's the same wave five modular form, but push up by copies of T. And other terms kind of uh, cancel out each other. So this is the formula. And there are many other formulas. Once we get the general formula, there are many other formulas of this kind. And thank you. I'm a little bit over time. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, thank you, Professor Long. Uh, so, are, are, are there any questions? So, all this was for the arithmetic triangle groups. Sorry? All this competition was for arithmetic triangle groups. Arithmetic triangle, yeah, these are all arithmetic triangle groups. They should, they should, they should arithmetic triangle groups. Yeah, all arithmetic triangle groups. Also, where's the map here? <laughs> no, it's not. It's for special cases of all. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful thing. That yeah. Is. Yeah. So uh, this one, they are all arithmetic triangle. They are all actually many of them are hacker groups. So the two yeah. infinity, yeah, and etc. Yeah. And then Professor uh, Ravi Kulkani, I should take this opportunity to thank you again because based on your paper, two of my former students, they actually have done a lot of work using the very same. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very explicit and nice. Thank you. I'm, I'm really new to, essentially new to number theory. Yeah, I like your, I, I like your work very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then the very symbols can be extended to hacker groups. Oh, yes. And of course, then the, uh, the way to do is the other two, which are the new thing, the main new thing will be the other two Shimura curve case, in which case we cannot use very symbols, <laughs> unfortunately. But luckily, still, we are able to use hypergeometric transformation property to bypass all the technicality. So we are, we are very pleased with the possibility. So in this series, two five infinity doesn't come. Which one? Two five infinity. Two five infinity. Yeah. So uh, there are other cases I should mention. The general setup. Uh, we are actually a. I mean, in general, the philosophy is if you go to the other group like two five infinity. Um, the corresponding uh, quaternion algebra is not defined over Q, but over Q joining square root five. And then the, I mean, the left-hand side should be correspond to HECA modular forms, okay. uh, which is the expectation. And that's okay. what my, uh, my collaborator, Jerome Hoffman, always very excited that we should move on to the HECA. <laughs> And then we always say, that, yes, once it's done, we should. <laughs> and, uh, and I think uh, this 2 5 infinity is another an arithmetic triangle group. I think it's um, 5 5 5. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, 2 5 5. Uh, 2 5 5. Yeah, yeah 2 5 5. But for two, 2 5 infinity is not an uh, arithmetic. 6 is also not arithmetic. 2 Which 6 one? infinity, 2 6 infinity. 2 6 infinity. Uh, this, this one, this one has a cusp. Yeah. Okay, but it is not arithmetic, right? It is oh, arithmetic. arithmetic. Yeah. Everything I mentioned over here will be arithmetic. So they are all commensurable with 2 3 infinity. And we have another nice diagram about the class one groups. But I cut it when I'm preparing for my talk. <laughs> I'm already over time, I apologize. 
even after cutting so many. <laughs> I still a woman. <laughs> if I may jump in here, what I was suggesting is to do the non, uh, the compact case five, five, five. Yeah. Now that one is compact. It is arithmetic, but the quaternion algebra is not defined over Q. Yeah. It's defined over Q adjoined square root five. Uh -huh. And this adds a lot of technical complication to our story. And the end result is that you'll end up with Hilbert modular forms, not with elliptic modular forms. So this is a new challenge, uh, which I think is worth pursuing, but it's gonna involve some really new things. Yeah, indeed, yeah. There are actually many possibilities once we get to this step. Uh, in the picture, we say that, uh, I'm able to get to the, here, yeah. Once we get to <laughs> two, four, six, so this this group played the role of PSL to C, and now inside this uh, picture over here, or oh, we start with two, four, six. We can deal with subgroups of two, four, six, and then consider what's happening below. Like uh, for uh, the links case, start from. SL to Z, you can go to the level structure and then you can compute a corresponding uh, hacker operator, adding on um, module forms with a fixed level, et cetera. And once we get to this picture, there, it opens up a possibility that we can go down from 246 to finite index subgroups of 246. And then to me and Winnie Lee, also the interesting question is, we will see many of them to be non congruent And what happens once we hit the non congruent module? Thing? Now, if I may just make one more comment, another possible extension of what we've done here, we've gone from the discriminant six algebra over Q, but in fact, the discriminant 10 case is also interesting and has been worked out in a lot of detail at least geometrically. However, what's new here <clears throat> is that you don't have hypergeometric functions anymore. Uh, technically, you're going from a differential equation with three regular singular points. That's hypergeometric. But when you go to discriminant 10, you have four regular singular points. And they have what's known as an accessory parameter in them. They're not merely determined by their exponents. So this is another interesting technical hurdle, which uh, Noam Elkies in his, in his investigations of Shimura curves had to confront. He had to determine the accessor, the, what was called the accessory parameters. And for that, the, what you do have control over is something called the Schwarzian derivatives. So this is called the Schwarzian equations. Now this is another angle which we haven't we, we've mentioned H A Schwar you know Schwartz's mapping theorem, but there's another thing here called the Schwartzian derivative, and the Schwartzian differential equation, in some sense, is a nicer invariant and easier to get hold of, and you do have control of that even for all these other, like discriminant ten and and Noam Elke's, you know made a big deal out of this in his papers, you know we can control the Schwartzian we have lots of information. So if you go from discriminant six to discriminant 10, we can't use our techniques exactly. And we don't get answers involving hypergeometrics. They're what are called Hoyne functions in the classical literature. So you, you go from H-E-U-N, they're called Hoyne functions. Whole books have been written about them. So these are, these are functions with four regular singular points. And I think that's another interesting angle to pursue uh, but anyway, there are lots of directions that one can go in. Yeah, we only know there is small part of the whole picture. Yeah. <laughs> but the last one may not be the rigid local system. Excuse me? Why it's no longer rigid. Yeah. Hybrid it's not rigid. That's right. It's not rigid. That's why you see, one property, that's right. One property we're using here, very important, 
is that these hypergeometrics have a, have a wonderful property called rigidity. They're completely determined by just knowing the exponents. This, this goes back to Riemann. But once you go to four singularities, it was already known in the 19th century that just knowing the local monodromy is not enough. There are additional deformation parameters, which were called accessory parameters. And the, they will indeed come up when you do discriminant 10, for example. And as I mentioned, uh, Noam Elkies, you know, he was trying to study these Shimura curves back, you know, in the 90s or something. And he had to confront the fact that he, he couldn't control, in some sense, the parameters. He had to, he somehow he had to determine these so-called accessory parameters. And he, fil he figured out a way, he had an ingenious method using coverings. <clears throat> so he determined it. And, you know, if you're going to go from discriminant six, like we did discriminant 10, I think some new technique is going to have to come in here, which would be very interesting. Yeah. Well, for us, it's lucky that the, this super group, it's already triangle group. <laughs> yeah. So in these triangle cases, you have three important points. And so you have differential equation with three regular singular points and it's rigid. You see, that's very key to the whole thing. Hey, thank you again for being here. And if you have so more is, is it the extension of some of your previous work with Vinili or completely new? Uh, this one, huh? this one is motivated by um, my, I mean, Professor Chu talked about our joint work last year on Ripple's transformation, Ripple's formula. Okay. From Ripple's formula, we see the role of Clausen formula. And then we push further how to use Clausen formula to get what we want. And luckily, everything, I mean, hypergeometric, it's very magical. <laughs> if you set it up in the right way, they will actually produce very kind of magical outcomes. So from Ripple's formula, we see we manipulated gamma 06 in Ripple's paper. And now we just step back to extract what we did in that paper, we noticed, yeah, we are using local systems already for that paper, we computed weight six module form. For here, we can move up the way. <laughs> Any even way, we have a formula. <laughs> and then we can also go to subgroups, yeah, et cetera. So it's a more flexible kind of um, technique that uh, from what we learned last time, we can apply to more cases. Uh, are there any other uh, questions or comments? Okay. <laughs> if not, let's thank uh, Professor Long again. Thank you for sharing this talk also. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank Professor Long for wonderful presentation. Okay. Before seeing all of you in person. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Sometime. Okay. Owen, can you stop the live stream?